Hi, I'm Jill with the West Regional Branch of the Mobile Public Library, and I am here with some more recommendations, or, well, in this case, some more books that I don't exactly recommend, but a lot of people enjoyed them, so you may like them. Um, the first one I want to talk about is uh, The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. The Poppy War is, it's an interesting concept. It's um, set in China, pre-communism, and it's the story of this girl who's kind of based on Mao um, in this world where, you know, magic is real. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's got a lot of historical inspiration, um, but with that, like, magical alternate universe stuff, the problem with it was is that I think the author seriously needed an editor because it was just too long. I mean, there's so many parts of it that just felt like a slog. Um, you know, maybe you have more patience than I do. Uh, maybe you'd really enjoy it. But like I said, it was an interesting concept and overall well written. It was just too long and too much time was spent on parts where it's like, I get it already. Can we move on to the next thing? Um, and then the second one I want to talk about is City of Brass by um, S.A. Shacklebordy. I had to check what the initials were on that, that author. Um, this one is, again, it's, it's interesting world building, something that's a little bit different. It, um, it's about the main character. She is sort of a con artist who's making her living by, you know, um, fake fortune telling on the streets of in Egypt. Um, and then one of her little scams turns into real and she realizes she's actually like related to genies or, or the djinn or however you want to say it. I'm, I'm not sure what the correct pronunciation is there. Um, and she gets whisked away to Dave Bad, Dave Bad, who, which is the city of the uh, Deva slash Jin. And um, again, it was really good world building. I mean, at first I really liked it, but then it all fell apart in the last third because the last third hinges on the fact that she doesn't know anything about anything. And I'm like, Sh it'd be understandable if she'd been there a couple weeks. But she'd been there for months, and this is supposedly somebody who'd been living by her wits all these years. I mean, ask some questions. Do some investigation. Find out a little bit about this place you're living and the people you're living with and why they're doing the things they do. I mean, the whole thing just didn't make any sense in the last third. So um, that kind of, you know, soured it for me. Um, and then the third one I wouldn't necessarily recommend is uh, John Scalzi's The Old Man's War. Um, the concept of this one is it's kind of, it's a little bit Starship Troopers-y, um, but the um, concept is actually that um, people who are like senior citizens about to die, they have the option of signing up for the military and in exchange for being shipped off to fight the space war, they get a whole brand new young healthy body. Um, so of course a lot of people sign up for this so they can be 20 or 20 again, it's worth it for the risk of, um, you know, going to war because, you know, what have they got to lose? They're, you know, 85 and have cancer or something. So, um, I said it was a good, good concept. A lot, I said a lot of it, I could see the inspiration from Starship Troopers. However, the problem is, is I don't think John Scalzi spent any significant amount of time with old people. Um, every one of his characters, I didn't believe them that they were older than like middle aged because they just don't sound like senior citizens. I mean, coming from a person who spends more time with people uh, 70 plus than, than with young people, um, I can say for sure um, John Scalzi needs to do a little more research for that book because, you know, every time you turn around, he's do they're doing something or saying something. And I'm like, I, I, I don't buy that. And it just pulled me out of the story. But again, interesting concept. And you may have a higher threshold for suspension of disbelief than I do. Um, so, I said a lot of three of these books were very popular. Uh, a lot of people love them. Um, maybe the thing that drew, drove me crazy won't bother you in the slightest. So um, if like alternate history or um, magic from a different system than you typically read in high fantasy or, you know, the sort of like military sci-fi, if those are things that appeal to you, you may highly enjoy any of these series, but they just weren't for me. Okay, now let's see, for a food item, um, just recently, I was talking to my grandmother and she said she missed eating quail because, you know, my grandfather used to hunt quail and bring them home and she cook them. And my mom's like, I don't want to eat any quail. I'm like, you know, I've never had any quail. Well, like a week after that, I saw quail on a uh, restaurant menu. I was like, oh, let me try that out. Oh, they were so good. 
and they gave me two quail I could have eaten like five or six of them I mean they were they were just delicious just you know um, like poultry of course but more flavorful I guess it's because they're such small birds it's all bone meat and you know the bone meat tastes better anyway leave me a comment down below and let me know what you have been reading and eating lately and I will see you next time bye bye